Well, Florida State gets to claim Amari Williams officially today. Folks, this is National Signing Day, if you didn't recognize that. I don't know when we're going to get that officially changed because it probably just should be because it's no longer that. But there are a few stragglers out there and a few come into the fold. But for Amari Williams, we we knew that commitment was, was a done deal, but it becomes official today. I'm looking at the uh, the hard commit and the signing here. Top 10 athlete in that category. Top 20, 25 player in the state of Florida, James. Yeah, he's um very good. Um, he was the, he was the number one overall athlete in the class of 2025 um, before he reclassified. So he was a five star, um, similar to what happened with Blunt. Um, every, every two fans obviously know we had Blunt, defensive end, um, edge rusher. Both of them were 16 years old. Um, we got him to reclassify, did the work. He decides that he wants to go to the University of Miami. Um, he's, he flips on National Signing Day. But once those rumors started getting kind of around. Florida State went for another kid in the Amari who we were looking at, um, got him to do what it was necessary to get him to reclassify, get him here early. Um, and it's just another defensive end that you're just going to be able to get into the place. He's got great frame, great size. Um, his, his dad played, um, dad played, if I remember correctly, he was running back um, at, at UK. He was, a, I mean, a good athlete. Um, and he's a guy who's going to come in and we have no idea what he's going to look like in two years because he's still 16. And he was dominating at that age. So he was a tight end, defensive end. So now, but I think we're primarily bringing him in as a D end. And he's a guy that will basically be able to hide, um, get him working out, get him training. Two years, will be. he should be a name that Florida State fans are going to be able to recognize. As I call one of those jersey guys, a guy whose jersey you want to be able to get. His dad's Mo Williams. I watched a lot of Mo Williams, both yeah. at Kentucky oh, yeah. and with the Vikings. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, he That's was the old running back old, for UK. Oh, yeah, starting start feeling old. You're like, oh yeah, I remember this guy. His daddy was such and such, and then you're like, oh man. That's crazy. Yeah, that I remember yeah, his, that guy. His daddy was in college after I was. That's how old I am. There you go. Yeah. Well, I feel young because bam, I've never I was that that was before my time of watching him on TV. So I feel young for a change here. But uh no, like like James mentioned, um, he was a five star, the number one athlete in the 2025 class. He flips over. I believe he's the number six athlete in the 2024 class. It's still a high four star, but kind of the difference in him and the guy that flipped Armando Blunt, the kid that flipped back to Miami. Blunt, it was kind of like known for a long time. He was going to reclassify. He reclassified for, with plenty of time, kind of things changed. He was able to climb the ranks up a little bit more. But make no mistake, there's no you know lack of athleticism. Amari Williams has every bit of potential. And the thing people talk about is his size. You know, it's a little bit of projection. You know, he has big hands, wide shoulders, so they think he'll fill out weight. But also, when you look at 6'4", 215, you're thinking that in, in terms of a senior. So like James was talking about, he's a year ahead. So like, yeah, he's 6'4", 215, but you're talking about a 16-year-old kid what would, you know, would usually be a junior. So I have no doubts by the time, you know, you get a red shirt freshman year under his belt, he'll be able to get up to 230, 240, like the staff is going to want him to, to be an absolute beast at defensive end. I've heard people talk about him possibly playing offense as a freshman because he's such an athlete just to get him on the field. And if you watch his highlight tape, you know, it's that part that sticks out. I think, Mark, the first time he's seen his stats, like you were asking, is this guy a tight end or what? That's like his more impressive stats, um, you know, as far as his time in varsity football but uh make no mistake he's going to be one of these brian birds types um that's what they're hoping to get him off the edge and rip and ran and uh, he's the type of athlete that people have been wanting um is he young yeah fine um you may not get you know his best years bobby hart is a guy that came in at 16 years old at florida state his best years were probably with the giants but you still got out of him uh, a couple good years and uh, he's an old people remember for a long time. So hoping the same with Amari Williams, get him in here and get him to work. The Benjamin school, James, are you familiar? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Every shoe fans, we should like the Benjamin school. That's where Jordan Travis <laughs> came from. Um, we've also had a tight end. That was pretty damn good. That came from there as well. Um, it's a, it's one of those um, really good affluent schools in um, South Florida that, um, you know, great education um, puts out some really good players. Um, and I think he's, um, I mean, they're, they're polished. Um, we, one of the things 
one of the things that's changing for good and bad um, about the sport is that it's about it's just as much about how how well trained you are than how good of an elite athlete you are. And so when you've got a dad, dad who's obviously been there, um, you can afford the extra training like your 16 is different than 16, 20 years ago. Um, so while I have if we have to play him, we're in a really bad position, which so I don't think we will. But he'll get an opportunity to be able to red shirt his body next year will come into um, effect and be a way better player than what we um, actually anticipated him to be. Um, I like guess, again, it's just different when you've been exposed to things that everybody else hasn't um, because you can afford to have done that with your parents. Absolutely. Uh, his team went eight and three this past year at Benjamin school, racked up 34 tackles, eight tackles for loss, four sacks, a couple forced fumbles and a pick. As George mentioned, uh, on the offensive side as a tight end, 16 passes received, seven touchdowns, had a bigger 22, but I'm guessing maybe some opponents didn't know about him, didn't get as much attention. 15 sacks and 40 tackles uh, the year before as a sophomore. Yep, that's, that's what I was going to say. His um, sophomore year um, was probably a lot, lot, be lot better. Um, but again, once people start knowing who you are and – now you have to adjust to double teams. You have to adjust to um, the, the attention that comes with it. And um, honest to God's truth, just um, the crazy nature of the way that high school um, is, is covered now. Um, I remember saying some things like back in the day that I didn't understand how forward thinking it was. But like now it's, it's, it's strange how true it is. I said what, what pro sports was. 10 years ago, I would say it's 10 years is when everything bumps down. Yeah. What pro sports was 10 years ago, college sports is now. But what college sports was 10 years ago, high school sports is. And then and so on and so on, the trickle down nice. effect. And with the invention of internet, I joked and said, there are kids. I, actually, the first person I talked about it was, um, oh uh, man, the tight end who ended up, um, excuse me, he's a quarterback and went to Auburn. It's going to come to me in a minute. But now he, he's at use at Louisville as a tight end right now. Um, it'll come to me. But anyways, he had like 25,000 followers and a blue check mark as a junior in high school. And I'm like, you haven't made a play <laughs> in college yet. But the amount of coverage that these young men are getting is it, it's it's wild. So I wouldn't even say it had anything to do with his skill set. It just takes a lot to go from to have everything being so critical and you have this newfound fame and stardom that it's difficult for, for everybody to even realize, even the people who've been through it. He's got more press right now probably than his dad had um, playing pro. So it's a, it's a difficult thing. Um, I, get, I get a chance to see it with, um, with a lot of um, the young men that I mentor and train. It's just it's, it's crazy how, how they can be successful with all eyes on them like that. Yeah, we'd have to go back and look at the roster, but who knows? Maybe he had a couple monster seniors, um, you know, on that line that other people worried about and getting those double teams back there when he burst on the scene as a sophomore. Um, you know, now you're that guy. And he's, you know, he's going to skip that senior year. He's going to go straight to straight to the big league. So can't wait to get him on campus for sure. Well, we've talked some Amari Williams. I don't know if you've got anything to add there. Obviously, we already knew that was a done deal, but uh, made it official with uh, National Signing Day. I think it's funny that that the big media that covers Florida State decided to release that he signed back in December when that's partially true. What does that mean exactly? Um I just think it's funny that how people try to get clicks off of these kids. Um, Amari and, and his mom and his dad, the, the whole complete story behind what, what they've done to get to the manner of where their family is, not just him, uh, but where they are as a family is the story that should have been written, not that this kid signed back in December. And, like, it, it's – I think that media sometimes gets so lost in what they think is the best story for them instead of telling the story of the young man and, and, and its family because those are the things that matter. Yeah, it's great that he's part of the Florida State football team. It's great that he decided to come uh, to Florida State. And all of that's great, but we knew that when he signed. 
Like that's summed up right there. You don't need to know when he signed. It doesn't matter if he signed in December, if he signed that day off the yacht. That part, that portion doesn't matter. But it's like, oh, let me flex a little bit and show that I knew this happened. You know what I mean? Like it's just an asshole move. Um, but when there's a huge picture to their story of why he wanted to be at Florida State, the reason that Florida State was the top of his list, the reason that uh, Papuchas and Odell Hagens and Mike Norvell and Fuller were a huge reason why he wanted to come be a Noel um, and why his mom said that Florida State felt more like uh, a family that would take care of her son than the other schools. The big story where the pop – where his pop said, look, it was just different. The reason that it was different is because Mike was the same. He goes, it goes back to scripture, but um, and a lot of people are in football or in faith that he said, Mike was the same yesterday as he's going to be today as he will be tomorrow. That's what we respected the most about coach Norvell. And then they go into the deeper stuff, but we was more worried about, Oh, we know he signed in December. It, it's just, it's asinine to me, but love Amari. His family's great. Um, can't wait to have him on the show. Um, can't wait to talk to his mom and his dad on the show as well. So we'll, we'll let them tell it. We'll let them tell their story instead of someone else writing what they think is the story. So, yeah, we'll be looking forward to that. Can you give us a sneak peek? So it sounds like it's a pretty special journey to this point that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, it, I, I would imagine it's going to be probably next month sometime because I've got, I've got DJs or big Dave, which is DJ used dad. I've got Marvin Jones, Jr. Um, I've got like four or five of their parents that are coming on to, to talk about their sons first. And then the plan is to have them, each individual, like Big Dave and DJU, come on uh, together. And then have Marvin and Marvin Jones Jr. come on together. It's So I'm trying to show what the parents see from the outside looking in. Uh, some of them being former players themselves at Florida State, like Marvin Jones uh, Sr. And then you, we just had Matt uh, Fryer on, which is Camden's dad. Uh, he was on with Kalen DeLoach's dad, uh, which is Rob. Um, and then now we're, the way we're going to set up is, is I'll have Camden and Matt Fryer on together. Then I'm going to have Marvin Jones and Marvin Jones Jr. on, then so on and so on down the list. And then I'll get to Amari and his family when they're ready and settled in. Um, but it, it'll be a it, the next few months will be a lot of fun. 